Hello scholars, welcome, Mr. Hinkle here. In this lecture, we're talking about igneous rock bodies. So igneous rocks cool from they melts and they form structures or features underneath the surface and on the surface. Rocks that form underneath the surface from magma are igneous intrusive rocks and the features they create are igneous intrusive rock bodies. On the surface, they're extrusive rock bodies. But for this one, we're looking at what's happening below the surface. So large masses or formations of igneous rocks will form as they cool. So we can classify and identify rocks based on texture and composition for igneous rocks. But then they also create specific structures that solidify from magma or lava. They vary in size, shape, and depth. And these structures give us insights into geological processes. Two types, intrusive, today's lecture, or today, meaning the one that you're watching right now, or extrusive in another lecture. So check that one out to complement igneous with our, uh, I'm sorry, intrusive with our extrusive. So intrusive igneous rock bodies form below the surface. They occur in a variety of structures. We've got plutons, dikes, sills, laccoliths, stocks, and you put them all together into a batholith. That's a lot. Let's go through them one by one. Intrusive rock bodies. OK, so some terminology. Rocks that form underneath the surface of the Earth are called igneous intrusive rocks. When a rock emplaces into surrounding rock, we say that it intrudes into that rock. Right? So let's say here's Earth's surface. And then here's a magma chamber. And that magma chamber is going to come up and then over like so. Well, the process that, or I guess you could say the verb we would say is it intrudes into the host rock or the country rock. And the feature is called an intrusion. Now, the boundary between the intrusion of that newly emplaced intrusive igneous rock and the surrounding rock is called a contact. I hope that you can see that. I want to double check here. Uh, kind of. Uh, I think that should do it. Oh, that made that weird. Technical difficulties, I apologize. So we have intrusions and contacts. So all of these igneous intrusive rock bodies are intrusions. OK. Have I confused you yet? I'm sorry. I don't want to do that. I want to make this as clear as possible. Surrounding country rock, igneous rock that cut into it, intrusion. The boundary between the intrusion and the surrounding rock is a contact. Now, certain orientations of rocks will create certain features. Goes like this. Let's say you've got all these layers of sedimentary rocks. And then tectonic forces happen and a break in the rock with displacement is a fault or a break in the rock without displacement is a joint. Let's say there's a break in the rock without displacement and that allows magma to come up and fill that area. Well, that magma solidifies underneath the surface of the earth. It intrudes into the surrounding rock because it cuts across. We call this an igneous dike, one of our types of igneous rock bodies. A little bit hard to see here because of the light, but what we have is, you know, here's my cartoon version. Here's the real world version. Surrounding rock, here is the exact process of a large igneous dike cutting across the surface of the landscape. Now, let's say that intrusion went parallel to the layers of 
sediments. So here's our dike. And then it fills in here. Now we call this concordance, where a dike would be discordant. We call this a sill, another type of intrusive igneous rock body that is actually intruded between. So here we can see this layer a little bit different than the surrounding layers. This is our igneous intrusion, but it's in line, and we call it a sill. Okay, shall we keep going? Yes. Now, the dike can actually fill up and start to create an arch above it. And that arch is going to push up the layers. And if the layers are displaced ever so slightly, then that displacement is called a laccolith. The laccolith is going to be our third type of igneous intrusion fed by a dike and creating structures that when all the other material on the surface is eroded around, create these igneous shaped hills. I'll talk about how we get this actual exposure shown at the surface here momentarily. Magma, we talk about magma a lot. Magma is melt that occurs underneath the surface of the earth. But where does magma hang out? Well, magma hangs out in a magma chamber, an underground pool or reservoir of molten material. Now, magma, when it starts to rise, the magma, the rising magma is a diaper. When that diaper solidifies, it would be considered a dike. When the magma chamber solidifies, it's a pluton. Okay, so magma chamber turns into a pluton as it cools. This gives us two more kinds of igneous rock bodies. A pluton that is less than the size of 100 square kilometers is called a stock. And a pluton that is greater is called a batholith. This is really cool. Okay, so the batholith. Well, here's the stock, the cottonwood stock of quartz monzonite pluton in Utah. Pretty big, but not a grand scale. On a grand scale, massive, irregular shaped, intrusive bodies like the Sierra Nevada batholith. Okay, so there's Half Dome. I love it. I've been up there a few times. Have you? Let's go. Let's go right now. It's so cool. The Sierras are so cool. I love them. They're my favorite type of rock is granite, and I love spending time in the Sierras. And the Sierras are a batholith, so it's a bunch of plutons that formed underneath of the Earth. We'll put this. And all merged together to form one giant pluton, or one giant batholith. But you might be asking, that's all the way underneath the ground. Half Dome is on the surface. How does that happen? And that's a great question. Well, it happens through time. So, the magma chambers that are forming the Sierra Nevada batholith happen underneath the surface of the Earth. There's overlying rock. These magma chambers feed volcanoes on the surface. But as time goes on, erosion occurs. So we're gonna take this slice here and remove everything above it. Now those dikes are exposed on the surface. We've got lacoliths exposed, lava plateaus exposed on the surface. And we're getting closer down to the plutonic rocks on the interior. But erosion occurs and time goes on. Now, we erode the surface of the Earth all the way down to the plutons, to the batholith, exposing igneous features on the surface. So, intrusive igneous rock bodies are created underneath the surface of the Earth. But as time goes on, erosion will expose them, laccoliths, dikes, sills, all the way down to stocks and batholiths. 
allowing us to study these features on the surface of the Earth. And by picking up the rocks and knowing that these rocks were formed based on their texture and their composition on the interior of Earth, their intrusive rocks, we can understand geologic history of an area. So surface of Earth composed of all different types of rocks. And we can look at the types of rock bodies, extrusive and intrusive bodies, to get a really good understanding of the geologic history, like the history of the Sierra Nevadas, to understand the story of our Earth. This is Intrusive Igneous Rock Bodies. Thank you so much, and I'll see you again.